I'm going to finish it with the binding. So I'm going to take my strip of fabric here. So right sides together. I'm going to use about a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. I'm just going to stitch this down here. Cut it off at the end. And then I'm going to switch over to a twin needle and just fold that over like that and then stitch down there. When you do, after you do your twin stitching, you can just cut this back. It's going to be super easy and super quick to finish this. So I'm just going to put my binding along this side. Again, I'm using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. You can change that. You could do it wider, you could do it narrower. So to use a twin needle, you just need to find your little um, post in your sewing machine accessories. And there should be a hole in the top of your sewing machine. And then just place your second spool on the post and just thread your machine. So you'll have two threads running through your machine. Take out your single stitch needle and insert your twin needle. And just thread the thread either needle with um, each of your threads. Discovering the twin needle was like a life changer for me because I didn't have a serger for the longest time and this gives you a nice stretch finish. Okay, so working on this binding piece, I'm just going to fold it over and fold it under. Exactly like you would a binding except I'm not folding it back under again on the other side. I'm just going to cut it off. And you just stitch like you normally would with your twin needle. So just make sure that you are not set to a zigzag stitch. Only a straight stitch. And now on the back, you can just trim this back close to your stitching line. Because this fabric is not going to fray. We don't need to worry about that. There, so there's your, the right side. Oh my goodness, the right side. Like that. Still has some stretch to it. And the inside still has a nice clean finish, even though we've just cut that back. So I'm going to do the same thing on this other side. Just turning it under.
So there we go. Um, now we're ready to bind the top and the bottom. Um, but with this binding, I'm going to add some elastic just to keep it nice and tight along the top and the bottom. Um, and then we're going to make all of our straps. So I'm ready to bind the top and the bottom of my swimsuit top. So I'm still just using my um, one and a half inch wide strips of swimsuit fabric. Um, I'm going to take this and with the right sides together, I'm going to leave kind of a one inch tail hanging over the back. And I'm going to use a three eighths of an inch seam allowance and a narrow zigzag stitch. So make sure you've switched from your twin needle back to your straight or your regular needle. So I'm putting a little bit of tension on my binding just to kind of contour that edge. Make sure that your underwire is out of the way of your stitching. You don't want to stitch into your underwire. And then when you get to the other end, just snip your threads and cut your binding back so you've got the same as the other side but a one inch tail hanging over the edge. So at this point you could just turn your binding over like we did on the sides and use the twin needle to stitch it down or you could add some elastic. Um, so I'm just using this swimsuit elastic, it's just some rubber um, and Kind of like when we did the underwire casing, I'm sewing it right along my stitching line. So this elastic acts as a stabilizer. It prevents this upper edge from stretching out too much while you're wearing it. And even just over time, Sometimes these elasticy fabrics can stretch out, so this is just going to um, stabilize this area. Make sure it stays nice and tight. Um, at this point. I would just go along and clean up this edge. Make sure there's no fabric that's any wider than the width of your elastic. So this elastic that I'm using is 3 8 of an inch. So I'm just trimming it, all of my fabric back to make sure everything is the same. My seam allowance is the same width as my elastic. So I'm going to repeat that exact same process along this lower edge and then we get to turn our binding towards the back and do some more stitching with our twin needle. So I've applied my binding and elastic to the upper edge and the lower edge of my swimsuit and I actually made another small change. I just um, trimmed off about an inch from the lower edge of my swimsuit. So at this point, I'm just going to bind my edge. So just turn it, rolling it around the elastic or around the raw edge. And I've switched over to a twin needle. And just like before, we're just top stitching this down with the twin needle. If you don't want to use a twin needle, you can just use a zigzag stitch along here. I would recommend using some kind of a stretch stitch because this area um, does need to stretch.
So be careful when you're stitching over um, the area where you've got your seam allowance where the cup joins the band and the underwire casing as that area can be pretty thick. So just make sure that you don't get hung up in that area. So there, that's the upper half is bound nicely um, with a nice stretchy yet stabilized finish. And just like before, we can just trim back, trim back the excess fabric, excuse me. So just trim as close to your stitching line as possible. So there it is on the inside and the outside. And I'm just gonna finish my top stitching along the lower binding. So it really is starting to look like a swimsuit now, and I'm actually getting really excited about wearing this. Um, so after I trim back this excess fabric along my lower binding, I'm going to be ready to get all my straps prepared. We're ready to prepare all of our straps. So I've got, cut a couple of lengths of one and a half inch wide um, swimsuit fabric. Again, the stretch is going lengthways. And I'm using this um, swimsuit elastic. It's just kind of a raw rubber elastic. Um, and it is going to get um, folded into our strap. Um, the reason why I'm doing this is this will allow the straps to still stretch, but it's going to be much more stable. If you just um, were to kind of treat this like a binding and stitch it together or turn it into a tube and turn it inside out. You might find that it stretches too much and your stitches pop um, and that is not a good thing. So I'm going to show you a really quick and easy way to create elastic stabilized straps. So I'm taking my elastic and I'm just lining it up against one raw edge of my binding or of my strip of fabric and I'm working on the inside. And I'm just gonna use a zigzag stitch to stitch that in place. So no need to pull on the elastic or anything like that. The elastic is just there to stabilize the strap. I just literally cut my finger <laughs> with some scissors. So I apologize for my band-aid and my injury. Um, I'm gonna be a little more careful with my scissors from now on. I literally just did one of those. Ah, and I'm such a baby. So <laughs> now that I've injured myself, um, now that I have sewn this elastic onto one edge of my binding, I'm just going to fold it around and then fold it around again. And I'm gonna use my twin needle to just top stitch along this edge. And then when I'm done, you just trim back the excess fabric. Um, so I'm gonna just switch over to a twin needle very quickly. Okay, so I've got my twin needle in place. And again, I'm just rolling that around. So I'm gonna show you again. So here's my elastic edge. Turn it in once, turn it in again, and then we twin stitch along that edge. I 
I really like this method for doing straps. It makes a nice sturdy strap, um, which is important, especially if you have a heavier chest. So I'd say if you're above a C cup, this is really helpful. Um, and it just, uh, it's quicker. I hate turning tubes, so there's no tur tube turning. So you can see I'm kind of um, pulling it so it's wrapping tightly. You don't want your elastic to fold in on itself, but you do want the fabric to be tightly wrapped around it. So my stitching was not perfect. <laughs> I may need to go back and fix a couple of areas here. But um, at this point, we can just trim back all of this excess fabric here. So I like to kind of fold it, fold it back, and then cut along that fold. All right. So there it is. So there's the right side. So just you've got your twin needle stitching along that one edge and it's nice and stable with some stretch. And then the opposite edge just has that zigzag stitching and a nice clean cut edge. I'm gonna need to tr um, tidy this up a little bit. There's some areas where I didn't clip as close as I would have liked. But otherwise, that's how you're gonna make your straps for the back and your shoulder straps. So I've basically, um, I'm gonna basically cut, make two lengths of these. So my fabric is 60 inches wide, so I'm making two 60 inch lengths, which is gonna give me a ton of strapping. So in the next portion, I'll show you how to attach the straps to the back, and then we will make adjustable shoulder straps. So I've cut one of my lengths of strap into just three equal sized or equal length um, length pieces, <laughs> equal length pieces. Um, and I'm going to attach them to one side of my top. So I'm just gonna make sure that my stitching line for this upper strap um, is running along the lower half of the strap. And with the right sides together, I'm just going to stitch it on right here with a straight stitch and then flip this back, flip that back under, and then top stitch down here. So like on the Romy bra, it's got that elastic tail that overhangs the top of the cup. This is the same kind of idea. So I've just stitched that on there and now we turn that towards the back and I'm just gonna top stitch down here to anchor it in place. And this area is very bulky. So just tip, stitch very carefully. And I just go back and forth over that a couple of times to make sure it's a good nice tight secure anchor and then you can just trim back all that excess and then I'm gonna fold this just in half lengthways to find the middle point and I'm going to take my next strap and I'm just gonna top stitch it on I'm gonna do a stitching line right here close to the edge and right over top of my twin stitching area. So you might want to use a really tight zigzag stitch, almost like a bar tack, or you can use a straight stitch, but whatever you do, just make sure you go back and forth a couple of times.
you want to make sure that that join is really secure. Okay, and my last one. Um, this time I'm going to make sure that my stitching line is running along the top half of my little elastic strap. And again, I'm going to stitch it onto my tail and then flip the tail under and top stitch it down. So I'm using a pin to kind of push my seam allowance in, make sure it all goes under. I might go back over that with a zigzag stitch just to make sure it's nice and secure. So we've attached straps all down the one half of the top and now basically how I'm going to do this is I'm just going to wrap it around I'm basically going to try it on and I'm going to put a pin where this side should attach to the opposite side. So mine fits to about right here. This is not a very scientific method, <laughs> as you can see. So I'm just gonna put a pin in there just to hold it in place. So you want it to fit tight, but remember it also has to be, um, you'll have to be able to slide it on and off. This bra does not have a closure, um, so you need to be able to pull it on over your shoulders. So attaching these is the exact same method as before, just make sure they're not twisted in any way. But So your top and your bottom strap onto those little tails that we left. sewing machine is not happy about having to sew through such a thick area, but it's almost done. So you could also make these straps adjustable if you wanted. I've done that before on a bra. All right, 
and I'm just going to pull this middle one across so that it's even. There we go. I'm going to pin that in place. So you can do as many straps as you want, or you could crisscross your straps. Um, you could even add eyelets and have it lace up. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you could finish this. And this technique you could use on um, so many different bras. Um, even, it doesn't have to be my pattern. I know there's a lot of other um, kind of long line bra style or bikini patterns out there right now. Um, I think it's Closet Case Files has the Sophie uh, bikini, which is um, a similar cut to this one, but you can sew the cups with foam. Um, and the leg is a little different than the panty that comes with the Cindy pattern. And there's um, also, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head right now, but um, Orange Lingerie has a long, a really nice long line, like bustier style bra pattern that would also make an amazing swimsuit top. So any of those, I think you could probably do a very similar hack if you already happen to have those patterns. Okay, I'm just going to turn this inside out and I'm going to trim back all my straps, make sure it's nice and neat. So at this point, I would just try it on again and make sure that you've got um, the band tight enough for you so that it's comfortable. So we are almost done and I'm super, super, super excited. Um, I can't wait to go to the beach. Um, but first we have to make our adjustable straps. Right, so we're on to our final step now. Um, I've cut two lengths of strap um, and then two little two inch pieces, which is gonna connect the strap to the back. And I've got my rings and sliders. So I've demonstrated this in another video, but basically all you do is you just feed one end of your strap through the slider and we're gonna stitch that in place. can use a tight zigzag stitch or a straight stitch, whichever you prefer. And I just usually move my needle over so that I can stitch as close to the slider as possible. All right, so and then you take your loose end, put a ring on it, and you go back up and through the slider. This gets pretty thick. It's kind of a pain to do, and I'm gonna have some trouble since I've got a Band-Aid on my finger and it's not working quite properly. There we go. There you are. It's definitely a pain to do. Ugh. There we go. Once you get the end through, it's much easier to draw it through. It's just getting it in because it is a thicker strap. There. <laughs> After all that trouble, there we go. We have an adjustable swimsuit strap made out of the same fabric as our swimsuit. So I'm just gonna demonstrate with the one to keep the video short. So I'm gonna start on one side and I'm gonna just put it the right side against the wrong side. And it's basically just up above where this seam line is. That's where I'm gonna place my strap. And I'm going to attach it with two rows of stitching. One row right along the upper edge. And then a row along my stitching line. Actually, I'm gonna do a tight zigzag there. Okay, 
Okay, so I've stitched, just done a straight stitching right there, back and forth, and then a tight zigzag right here to anchor that in place. And then bringing this around, I'm going to take one of my little two inch pieces, feed it through the ring, and I'm going to stitch it right here, right next to um, where this strap attaches. And I'm going to do the exact same thing, a row of straight stitching and a row of zigzag stitching. So there it is. All I have to do is attach my second strap in the exact same way and I've got a super cute um, bikini top with an underwire and a strappy back and this will look great under a lot of those low back um, or backless shirts as well. I've got a few of those and it's nice to have something kind of interesting to wear underneath. I hope you found this helpful and a lot of these techniques you can actually apply to a lot of my other sewing patterns. So this binding with the elastic you can use in place of um, other elastics. So like the leg line of a panty or if you're sewing my Anouk bodysuit as a swimsuit. Um, this binding is a great finish for the leg line and the neckline. Um, and this is also a really nice way to make a quick and easy strap for on a swimsuit. Um, so that's it. I hope you enjoy wearing your swimsuit and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks. Bye.